Well, to start uh, giving some solutions to the difficulties that Matt's just presented with conservative treatment, we'll start on the surgical side. And João uh, Espargueira Mendez from Portugal is going to start with uh, some surgical uh, treatment alternatives for cartilage repair, including a novel technique that he's developed. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, good morning, because it's my last presentation. I would like to thank again Philippe Landreau for this fantastic and warm hospitality and congratulations for such an outstanding scientific program. Can you put my slides on the first slide, please? You just put the last one. So this is a place where I work in north of Portugal, in Porto, just inside the FC Porto Stadium. It will be a pleasure to receive all of you that want to visit us. And my task is to, treat, to talk about surgical treatment of cartilage lesions and in football. And the first message is that there is a lot of things that we don't know in cartilage treatment. We don't know why cartilage hurts. We don't know why sometimes we have periods with pain and periods without pain, why sometimes we have this kind of cartilage lesions without any pain. We know that cartilage defects are strongly correlated with osteoarthritis and decrease of the level of physical activity. And the first question we will need to ask ourselves is, are the spores themselves causing osteoarthritis? And it's clear in the literature, if you are talking about uh, sports with impact and twisting, they can increase the osteoarthritis level. And the prevalence of knee osteoarthritis in sports, it can go up to 30% on former football players. We know the goals of repairing the cartilage. Diminish pain and swelling, improve function, prevents osteoarthritis. Do it with the comor lowest comorbidity that we can, but in this population, the goal is to achieve sports at the same level. What in cartilage is not easy. In this systematic review that we just published in arthroscopy, it's clear that regarding results, there are no different in results in large lesions, grade four, weight bearing areas with mosaic plasty, microfractures, or ACI massy. And then the return to, to, to football again is not excellent on results. Overall, you have a return to competition with mosaic plasty with 87%. And what is important to mention is that the big difference, and I'm going to emphasize that at the end, is re regarding return to sports. In return to sports, we are going to find difference in these three techniques. In this study, also a systematic review, you can see that OATS gives better results than microfracture, but not conclusive in ACI. And in return to sports, the level to return to sports is around 73%, with 68% at the same level, what is clearly not enough for our athletes. If we look to the techniques themselves, uh, the father of the microfracture, Bob Stidman, shows very good results in return to sports, up to 95%, but he's the father of the technique. In another study, we show, uh, this study, this auto show that if you do debridement, you have 
a 67% to return to, to, to successful American football. But if you do microfractures, you decrease the level of returning to sports in this population. So in this study, it's better not to do microfractures, just to do chondroplasty or debridement. In these nice studies from Lars and Gabretson from Norway, you can see in a prospective randomized studies that there is no difference between ACI and microfactor results, even after five years. In this nice study of Metoffer, you, you see that with ICI, you, don't, you only see return to football in 33% and only 80% at the same level, so not enough. In this study, better results, so just to show you the controversy of the results, better results with Massey, and especially if the players are only playing football after the 12 years, 12 months of post-op, what is interesting. The Engadi study, father of mosaic plasty, excellent results on inter sports, but again, he is the father of the technique. In our study in 2012, we, so, we show only 78% return to, to football, and so, again, in according with the literature. This nice study of Gouda's shows that there is better results on my, uh, of mosaic plastic over microfracture in this population of young athletes, and this study shows superiority of mosaic plastic over ACI in this uh, uh, population of active uh, uh, players. But, as I mentioned before, what is really important to mention is that regarding returns to sports, then you can see the difference in many studies. Mosaic plastic has a shorter period in Latlis to return to sports. And ACI Massey as the longest period to return to sports. And if we don't see any difference in results, or there is a controversy on it, at least we need to look to this to make our decision process. And so, without having a consensus of the treatment, the three major approaches uh, in the world, or the four major approaches, are microfracture, asimasi, mosaic plasty. I will show you the Portugal mosaic plasty and allografts. Microfractures, easy to perform, they are not expensive, they can address, address bipolar lesions, and it's one-step procedure. Asimasi, you know the legislation problems in Europe, and uh, there are many companies that need to go back to studies to do it again because they didn't perform the perfect study to achieve to this moment. And so we have problems on, on this technique and there is some uh, disadvantages concerning two surgeries and also the, the price of the procedure. And we can add scaffolds to it. There are several different scaffolds in the market. And even we can add cells and growth factors. But in fact, if you look to the present moment, despite it is very promising for the for future, the present mo mo moment, we don't see clear evidence of better results with scaffolds, with cells, and with growth factors. And this is a, a, a clear statement in this work of Nori Nakamura, Nakamura, saying that there is insufficient evidence from the studies that use cells to treat these, these patients, and there is not superior results on this strategy. So, mosaic plastic, we can use it, is viable option for, to address these, these uh, lesions, and there is nice graft availability, uh, but of course with donor side morbidity. So what are the advantage? We use the, the osteochondral graft from the same patient, less expensive, one-step procedure, and faster recovery and return to sports. And this is clear for large lesions. In the, with this technique, we also address something that other techniques are not able to address, that is the subchondral bone. If we have lesions with the involvement of the subchondral bone, this mosaic plastic could address this lesion better. But we don't want to do this. This is clear. If we have a football player or an athlete and we do this to a knee, is not nice. 
And we know from the literature that this donor side morbidity in this technique. Knee to knee, but also in studies with knee to ankle. Clear, important morbidity when we harvest these grafts. And so the question is, can we avoid it? Can we use another technique with same results of mosaic plasty, but without the same morbidity? And so we work during the last years in this graft from the upper tibial fibular joint, using a joint that is not necessary for the normal functioning of the knee, and that in our results has almost no morbidity. Of course, we need to study the anatomy first, and we describe two types of joints, the plane joint and the L-shaped joint, and we also study the potential of resurfacing. And if you use the fibula and the tibial surface, you can go up to five square centimeters of potential resurfacing, what is really nice in large lesions. What about histology? We study the lateral femoral condyle, comparing it with the two surfaces of this joint. And the lateral femoral condyle is very similar to the tibial side. The fibula side is a little bit thinner on the thickness. Technique, it's easy. We address, the, we address the joint directly. On the first case, is we isolate the peroneal nerve. Now we don't use it. We just fill it. And we do a horizontal cut and the vertical cut, sparing the lateral collateral ligament and the muscle insertion. And we take out a, an osteochondral block that we put on the table to do our mosaic plasty. We do the same on the tibial side. So we gain we, then easy because we have an open joint and we remove an osteochondral block to put on the table and to do our mosaic plasty. We, we develop some tools to do this and with these tools, we are able to, to gr grab the graft and to do these nice plugs. So regarding the result on plugs is the same that a regular mosaic plasty. Our point is morbidity. We do an open placement if you use more than two plugs, and especially if you address different uh, regions of the joints, because you want to have the most smooth surface that you can get. If we use only one, large plug, we use the atroscopy to put it in place. And so with that, you can have a regular mosaic plasty. Of course, with the same problems on congruity of the surface that you can see in the regular mosaic plasty. It's not different, it's not perfect on the surface. You can use it customizing the osteochondral bone block and use it to one single bone block if it fits well on the lesion. And of course, with this approach, you can address the size of the osteochondral graft because you know that the biggest is the bone osteochondral graft, the better for the results. Rehabilitation classic for mosaic plasty. We are very fan of this Alta G machine because we can address immediately movement without weight bearing or decreasing 80% of the weight bearing of the body. And our weight is related with the number of plugs, location, and stability. So we are a little bit conservative on this because we think a good healing is important for football and to return to sports. We publish our results with more than 10 years follow-up in, in the Kester Journal. We show a nice improvement on VA scale score and a very good improvement on lesion score. But what I would like to point is that we didn't found morbidity on the donor side. No instability, no peroneal nerve, no, uh, no ankle problems, no infection, and no other problems. So this is the message that I think, if you consider to use mosaic plasty, think about this joint, because it's a nice option to this joint. Of course, that if you have uh, malalignment, it's absolutely crucial to correct the myelina to get the results. The problem in football is, as Philip mentioned yesterday very well, you need to be to go for neutral. 
don't overcorrect, otherwise you will decrease for sure the level of your player. So as a take-home message, what I would like to share with you is that the, the, to treat these lesions, the defect location, size, and age as a big influence, that on results in large lesions, weight-bearing large lesions, grade four, there is no difference between these three techniques, that really the ready availability and the single stage low cost makes mosaic plastic a good option, together with microfracture, of course, and that return to sports make in our hands the difference to choose mosaic plastic. If you want a faster return to sports, think about mosaic plastic because it's really better on return to sports. Which are our indication 2016. We do microfraction in more than 90% of the cases, especially non-weight bearing, all cases, small lesions in weight bearing, so means for us less than 1.5 square centimeter, and in large lesions, weight bearing area, grade four, we like to use the Porto gut because it's a mosaic plastic. You don't have problems on joint mobility, but especially you do it with low morbidity and low cost. Welcome to ESCA, and don't forget, is a close 2017.